Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And now, the champion, fighting out of Los Angeles, California. This man is a movie snob with a background in fighting and a lifelong addiction to all things superhero related. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed host of the show, The Iron Cube. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 122 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. We now have a Facebook page for the podcast. You can follow for updates, as well as my 1-6 scale figure reviews. This week, the team reviews Ad Astra, followed by movie, television, and video game news. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles we've watched with a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. If you have not seen the review of the week and would like to avoid spoilers, check the show notes for the timestamp so you can still hear our news sections. And I forgot to look up the synopsis for Ad Astra. All right. 30 years ago, Clifford McBride led a voyage into deep space, but the ship and crew were never heard from again. What the f- Did you guys hear that? Yes, I did. Now his son, a fearless astronaut, must embark on a daring mission to Neptune to uncover the truth about his missing father, God damn it, dogs, <laughs> <laughs> and, a mis- <laughs> and a mysterious power surge that threatens the stability of the universe. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, why don't you guys do your reviews? I can hear you, but I'm gonna go deal with these dogs for a second. Everson, you want to go first, or should I? You to take the lead. All right. Um, so my review for this one is I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a draw. Uh, I walked into this theater thinking this was gonna be sort of like a badass action movie because that's what I thought it was gonna be from the trailers. Like there was something going on across the solar system, and there's gonna be this whole journey to go fix it, and there's gonna be a lot of action along the way. I thought it was gonna be a cool action oriented movie but then when i saw it it was very different from what i was expecting it was and without going into spoilers i'll say this movie is very quiet uh it focuses a lot about the psychology of the main character who brad pitt plays and while there are some cool action moments emerson i'll bring up the the point you made while we were reviewing uh alita battle angel it, it made me want to see more of the things that they kind of just brushed over And I'll get more into that when we get to the scenes and talk about them. But, yeah, no, like, it's not exactly what I was expecting. And I would have given it a loss, but there were actually some scenes in this movie and, like, the whole general flow that actually looked really good. It looked well shot. It was an interesting concept. Uh, And, yeah, it was a little slow at times, but it's it's unlike any movie really I've ever seen before, except perhaps maybe Gravity because it had that same level of quietness and it was a space movie, but I don't know. That and uh, I'll take this time to also say I had another theater experience while I was watching this. So this being a very quiet movie, uh, I want to say halfway through, three rows down from me, an old couple fell asleep and would not stop (laughs) snoring the entire time. (laughs) And not like subtle snoring, it was like loud throaty snoring. It was very audible, and it was very distracting. So that did not help seeing this movie like that. But anyway, yeah, no, I give it a draw. That's Good hard because you can't things. even shush them. You have to, like, yeah, you'd have to wake them, them up. Yeah, be like, wake up, be quiet. Speaking of which, so today um, I was going to the pharmacy, and there was this old couple, and they both had uh, walkers, like the kind you can also sit on. Okay. And the old man had a bag of groceries and he was trying to sit in his walker, but it was like he didn't apply the brakes. They weren't locked. So oh, the wheels no. kept like moving and he had the big bag and like the other woman in, that was already sitting in her walker was trying to like help him, but it wasn't working. And so I walked up I'm like, do you need any help? And 
He's like, she, he he didn't answer me at all. Like, he wanted no help at all. The woman's like, can you just hold the walker for him to sit down? And he's like, no, I got it. And I'm like, okay, he doesn't got it. So I, I put one finger on the walker to keep it steady. And he's like, hands off, hands off. <laughs> and I'm like, the wheels are not locked. And he goes, I got it. And then he like barely, like dude, he totally risked his life. He like barely made it into the chair without it slipping out from underneath him. And um, so I just went inside. The lady was like, thank you. I was like, you're welcome. Like, whatever. He's old and grumpy. And then um, I come outside and he, he's waiting out there because his wife's shopping in her walker. And uh, I come outside and he locks eyes with me and he just like looks down. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, hilarious. Jeez. Um, Thanks. So, Ever, what was your rating? Um, I gave it a draw for a draw. various okay. reasons. All right. Emerson? So I also give it a draw for similar but different reasons. So I did suspect, Kia, you had brought this up, and as I watched more trailers, I knew that there was going to be a psychological aspect to this movie, and they were going to go for like some sort of like psychological messing with you. And as I was watching it, I realized very quickly, actually in the first 10 to 15 minutes, oh, it's going to be one of those movies, this artistic introspective thing. Um, the thing is, I feel like there were a lot of half-baked ideas. There were very cool concepts, very cool ideas, very cool scenes, but it feels like they just got about halfway through to the end and they were like, how do we wrap up these plot threads? It was not a very satisfying ending for me. Um, it seemed very, not even anticlimactic, just short. Short and not completely fleshed out or as much as I would have thought it would be. Uh, I will say that I guessed the ending twice and was wrong both times. Uh, so it's just a draw for me. There are parts of it I like. There are things they did artistically, cinematically, thematically that I think are good, but they just, it's not all there to give it the win. All right, yeah, I'm going to give this a loss. And the reason is because when we give things a draw, we recognize other people may appreciate it. I just don't see how anyone could really qualify this as a great movie or even a good movie. It's not bad. It's just like like you said, half baked ideas. So much of it just doesn't land. That I, when I walk out of the theater, um, you know, what am I supposed to have taken away from this? So when we go into spoilers, I can tell you what I think their whole message was. Yeah. All right. So um, for me, yeah, it was. It, I didn't have a problem with the quiet movies. I kind of got that feeling from the trailers. Um, I did feel like it was gonna be weird and usually weird doesn't work for me and when i say for me i really mean it doesn't work but i'm just you know my opinion is that it doesn't work people will argue that but most of the time weird movies don't land and um so i had a feeling like are they gonna stick the third act it turns out i was wrong I, they really didn't even stick like the first and second if i'm honest um yeah, and you know, like that hook with him falling off the tower, that happens so early in the movie, which I know it's supposed to be the opening, but it happens so early, I was kind of thrown off by the pacing of the film. I'm like, what are they going to do next? Right. And it was just like, what they did do, I didn't like as much. So anyway, we can go into spoilers. So what, what do you think the message is? I think the whole message in the movie was like, to love something, you need to lose it. So there, there were a few different messages. At the start of the movie, he monologues, which I didn't like very much, about how he doesn't care about anything, and he basically doesn't give a crap about life, and he I, doesn't like people. I read that someone said that <laughs> all the all the narration should have been taken out of the film. And I agree. Um, and I think that the ending was supposed to be, okay, so once he lost all that society, he realized he did miss it, and then it's also simultaneously about him letting go of his father and, like... You think he missed society? Well, at the end, he's like, I missed it. But here's my problem, okay? And, and we can talk about the missed society thing in, in more detail as we discuss this. So I feel like it's trying to say, oh, he misses society and he wants to go back. And also, he's finally gotten closure on his father. The thing is, the way the movie sets him up at the beginning, I don't feel like he's the type of guy who would give a fuck that his father's gone. I think that what they should have done is at the beginning they should have set up a lot more that he's like doing this because of his dad, he misses his dad, he, he has hope, instead of doing the he's just tired of all mankind shtick. 
Because at the end, it's like, okay, because about halfway through, he suddenly becomes like, I need to find my dad. I need to find my dad. I need to find my dad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, there's, okay, so let's talk about some of these half baked ideas. Um, the thing on the moon, or not the moon, the tower where he falls off. Yeah. It's like interesting. It, it doesn't really go as hard as I thought it would. Like, you know, we've seen like space collisions before, and I was expecting some sort of cooler thing, but it, okay, it was just the tower, you know, way up in the sky, whatever. Um, so he falls, and then the movie almost like forgets about him, or forgets about the fall, I should say. So they they just refer to it as a fall, like, hey, your fall, like you had that fall, right? Let's move on. It was yeah. kind of weird. Um, so I said, okay, that's like a pretty big action sequence that they didn't really like sink their teeth into they just kind of put it in there so i get that it's setting up the antimatter thing but i don't know like they moved on from it so quickly that i thought maybe this is a bad sign for the rest of the film and yeah. so as you go on you see a bunch of stuff like ever like you said um they had some things that you wanted to see more about that they mm -hmm. just blow right past on some level, I see what they were doing. They're trying to make you feel like this is a casual thing now. No big deal that this is this way or that's this way. Um, but so like I enjoy that there was uh, a flight to the moon, like a commercial flight to the moon. Yeah, and it was funny when he asked for the blanket and pillow and it's like, okay, $125. Yeah, seems realistic. Um, I will say, though, Tommy Lee Jones's character seems like he's from the 60s. Yeah. Like his name is Clifford. Yeah. But he would he have been like our age. Not even in the movie, really. Like that yeah, was. He, he was more of a cameo, if anything. He was barely in the movie at all. Which, from the yeah. trailers, it seemed like he was going to make more of an impact. I mean, you knew he was going to find him and he was going to be up to something. But how cool that something was, you know, up for debate. But the other thing is. Um, the soldiers did you think it was weird that they were on the moon and they were his military escort and they basically it was like one guy and they didn't even seem to have weapons well yeah it was a crappy so they had three vehicles and like they all just got wrecked yeah they um, were not prepared at all like you could have then, taken like, nobody the guys asking like one of the cooler scenes in that at the end of that is when the military base launches those mortars and it detonates in the darkness, and the idea is that they just took out the pirates' landers or rovers. Yeah, right. But it's like, why don't you have heavier weaponry on it? And I guess the reality is the only reason they made that scene like that was to show that Brad Pitt was a badass. Yeah, but that, that it, like well, that whole scene, true. that whole scene doesn't make sense. Like, f like you're right. That's one of the things I was talking about. That's like one of my main points when I said it was kind of half baked, and I wanted to see more. The fact that they include a scene where they get attacked by space pirates and then just never mention it again is really poor writing. Plus, you'd think that, whether anyone knows about it or not, this guy is on a mission basically to save the human race from destruction. And they go out on the moon on basically what are golf carts with what Emerson said, no heavy weaponry except for like a few sidearms. And yeah, it looked like they were advanced like energy weapons, but... You'd think by this point in time, if they have the technology to build an actual base, not only on the moon, but on Mars, they'd have like an up upgraded form of rover, right? Like a more armored tank type thing for the moon instead of like those like little buggies. And also so, they killed the first black guy. Yeah, so just to interject, I, I don't have an issue with them not mentioning the pirate attack because like Kia said, I feel like it's supposed to be like, this is life. Like we really don't hear much about like pirate attacks here on Earth. When people hijack like, and why ships, would you? Sometimes we they hear, obviously yeah. don't put any resources into yeah. They don't matter. Stopping the them with, like with the tanks. I feel like this movie's trying really hard to be like near future, and I could believe that. But this movie is simultaneously trying to be like utopian and dystopian. So like, yes, there's advanced technology, but no, the human condition isn't better. And like, yeah, they do kill that guy instantly. And I guess the whole idea there was like, oh, you can die at any time, and it's a cruel, unfair universe. Yeah, but not Brad but, Pitt. Like, yeah, well, what I was going to say about it is that I understand that's the point, but I also don't care. Because, like, I'm just like, okay, that, like, 
why didn't you guys take the rocket to the military base? And they're like, oh, well, we had to fly civilian. It's like, did you? Why don't you have a train? Like, th a train I, there to the are, moon? Oh, a train no, to a there, train yeah. from the... Yeah, that um, yeah. It's well, just... It, it someone was matter. saying gravity, the gravity on the moon doesn't really make sense. That no, the scene, way the way it moves yeah, does not make sense. That scene feels like it was from a different movie. Yeah, I agree. Have you seen and that I, commercial about the beans and the astronauts on, in, yeah, on the moon? Yeah, I love that commercial. Like the monster attacks them and the astronaut hides and then he farts because he ate beans. Yeah. That this this scene feels like it's from that. Yeah, I, feel I, like, can, I can see that. I feel like someone went over it, like a producer or something, and was like, we need an action sequence like somewhere in this act. Yeah. And uh, even in the trailer, I was like, well, okay, if we're going to get like an introspective, artsy, weird movie, why why is that scene there? Like, I hope that that doesn't, it's not just like a one-off. And yeah, it is just a one-off. <laughs> um, and you guys said it's to show Brad Pitt as a badass, except I honestly couldn't tell who was doing what most of the time. I wasn't sure who got shot, whose suit ripped, who... Who was I dying? just knew it wasn't Brad Pitt. Also, can I can I say as well? Uh, what, what's the actor who's Donald playing Sutherland. Brad Pitt's like friend? Yeah, he was literally not in the movie. What yeah. was even the point? He, the trailers made it look like he it was like a buddy trip. Nope. Oh, did it? I didn't. So I just um, I just thought the same thing that I remember thinking in the movie that everyone that he meets is just there to get him to the next thing. Like they're all just tools. They're all plot devices. So this guy. I'm going to go to the moon. I knew your father. Something's not right with him. Ah, I can't go on. Here's the information you need to go forward. That's his whole character. Yeah. I mean, he didn't even get shot. Did he Did he get shot in, in the moon thing? He had like a heart attack. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> right? if anything, no, that, that kind of... He just had a heart attack. When you describe it like that, it kind of feels like the intro sequence to a video game. Like you have like your buddy soldier who dies immediately. It's not like, good writing. And movies like this are hard, so I, I want to cut it some slack. But at the same time, it's like, well, if you didn't, if you didn't know you could do it in a way that is unique and exhilarating, why did you make the movie? Um, because this is like cookie cutter stuff, you know. Like he just goes from point A to point B to C to D, and the whole time he's just like, ah, my emotional state is so suppressed. And it's working for me. And then, and then, like you said, I, one of you, I think it was Emerson, said that he just kind of turns. Exactly, he does. He does turn, and that's what makes me feel like it was two different movies. In my opinion, he should have been much more emotional, but much more optimistic at the beginning. And the payoff should have been that, like, he gets crushed. But instead, he's like pessimistic and doesn't care. Then halfway through, he becomes like optimistic and worried. And then at the end, he's happy. And it's like, okay whatever and almost like every character idea. almost every character in the movie is like you said kid they're, they're plot points but more than that they're just stupid like how many scenes are there and there's some interesting scenes like i like on mars there's this real feeling of like isolation and like almost insanity like he's not allowed to go home because he fails his psyche exam he's forced into this happiness room there's all this red light there's constant scenes of people being engulfed by darkness but it's just like, oh, we met this character. Oh, they're gone. Oh, we're introducing four more characters. How's he going to... Oh, they're all dead. Oh, okay. It's just him. It's... It's... Okay, it just gets worse, if you ask me. So, so he gets to the... He survives the moon thing. He's still capable to do his mission. So he gets He's on the, the shuttle. He's with the stupid team where he remarks, like, they work well together, even though we never see them work well together once. Yeah. Okay, here's here's another thing that I thought during the movie. Doesn't this feel like it was adapted from a novel? Absolutely. Is it? I don't think it is. The pacing of it and, like, you know, the narration and, and the kind of the way that he describes people, it feels like a book. Is it based on anything? And and also, what is Ad Astra? Ad Astra is Latin for to the stars. Oh, okay. I'm like, they never said it. <laughs> they, um, they say that at the very beginning. It's the first scene you see. It says to the stars. Mankind has always looked to the stars, and it fades just to the stars, and then to becomes Ad, or to the becomes Ad, 
and then Stars becomes Astra. Directed by James Gray, he said he wanted to feature the most realistic depiction of space travel that's been put in a movie. Okay. Also, I'd like to point out, but, just reading on the Wikipedia article, okay? Yeah, that's what it I'm It says to. it's starring five people, if you read the first part, including Liv Tyler and Donald Sutherland. Well, I and guess, Ruth yeah. Ruth Nega. Yeah, but here's the thing. Who's Ruth Nega? Uh, I don't know. Oh, she's, she's not in it. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But even Liv Tyler's not really in it. I mean, I get Liv, it. Liv She's Tyler the female even, love interest. Does she even speak throughout the movie? I don't think so. No, there's a video of her speaking. A video oh yeah, she there. says something. Okay, well let's this is let's keep a going. Financial though. success. L okay, so the most realistic depiction of space travel that's been put in a movie. Uh, Do you understand that that is the equivalent of saying, "I want to show a film of a person sitting on an airline flight." It is, yep. yeah, and and I mean, I do give them, I do give them, some credit because very few things in this look unreal. Like I could imagine all of this. The problem is none of the human characters' reactions or interactions are real, or feel real. It's just stupid. I hate to say this, so you remember my early drafts of the screenplay, Emerson? Yes. And I had a character that was very much like me, obviously. But one thing about it is, like, there was, like, fighting and, and competition in it. Mm -hmm. And um, in, even though it was a fantasy setting, like, the idea was that the character, like, for me, the way that I handle my fighting and all my competition was to just get the job done. Like, I, I, was, I would not get distracted by other things. I would kind of, like, uh, I would retreat into myself a little bit and just, like, get ready for the match and... And then when I handled business, I never jumped up and screamed, yeah, like it was always like a quiet, you know, but when I wrote the screenplay with that character, like it, the character wasn't supposed to be me, but th like there's obviously influences of like how I would do what I consider to be like the hero's way of doing th things, right? How I would react to victory. And one of the notes I got back from the people who reviewed it, they're like, you know, the character doesn't react. Like, people die in front of him, and he, you know, he, he's okay with, like, not that I'm okay with death in front of me, but I understand when someone loses, you know? I don't cry for them. You know what I mean? And that's, like, my personality, but but the general audience, and, and I think they're right, the general audience doesn't understand that. And if you show a movie or a story that's about a character who doesn't, connect with the world around him and who doesn't react in ways that you would expect like at one point um this is like a very very early draft but the 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 main character's son's mother dies in competition do you remember that yes and and like one of the notes i got back is like why doesn't he cover his son's eyes or like like why doesn't he yell or cry or like he, he did He's nothing like well i'm not saying i would do nothing in that situation i'm just saying i get why how someone would would just like stoically watch and to me like that's enough i don't know so the point is you have this character brad pitt's character or whatever his name is and like the whole thing is like look how look how reserved he is and stoic and calm and then he loses it later, and it's supposed to be like, oh my god, it broke him or something. Look, look how but far he, he doesn't, is. He doesn't get broken. He becomes like a different person who like is kind of maybe broken, but not really. I agree. So what you end up with is a, is a first half of the movie where, as the audience, like that's what we're saying, right? That he doesn't really connect, and the people around him don't connect with him, and he doesn't connect with the world. And so what are we meant to feel? And this is why I think the, the notes I got were correct because what is he like? We don't know what to feel like. It's kind of funny. You know, they say a lot of show don't tell mm -hmm. and that's correct. But you also need to tell the audience by showing them what to think and feel. Right. So, so, so my story was a tournament, right? I mean, it yeah. still is. But so one of the other notes I got back is I, I didn't tell you as the reader who was going to win, right? Right. Because that's not how real tournaments are. Like, we wrestle, we think we know, but we have to watch and see. So the idea was that anyone could win. And 
one of the notes I got back is like, how are we supposed to know who to root for? And I'm like, you're not supposed to know. You're supposed to enjoy the competition. But then I started thinking about it, and they're right. Because as the audience, you need to know what you're supposed to think about it. I know you're not supposed to like say, this is the good guy, this is the bad guy. But you're supposed to feel like one person should win over the other, and then whoever does win means something. Like either good news or bad news, right? And some people like the bad guy, but then they'll feel bad if the bad guy loses. But the point is like you're supposed to know like who is m- supposed to win. Who's who are you meant to root for? The audience has to know that. And so with Brad Pitt's character here, he's just like I, we don't know what we're supposed to root for. Like we want him to go find his dad, but we don't know who his dad is, and neither does he. And he also doesn't really care. <laughs> and and like we we know that he's going to care eventually cuz otherwise there'd be no movie, but when he does care, we're like, okay, so, so in that scene on Mars, like we understand what happened, right? Yeah. He, in the moment when he finally connected with his dad. He breaks down. He's now emotionally yeah. like compromised. So he's are we no saying, are we totally saying it was too quick? No, we're saying it's too much of a change because the character that he was before, if he had a breakdown, it wouldn't be that he suddenly cares. He, he's not the type to have a breakdown. He would just be like, whatever. He, because we get no, we get no indication that maybe there's like repressed feelings there, okay? He's yeah. just a guy, but then all of a sudden his personality goes. It, it it's too quick, Kia, but it's also out of character of the character that was built. That's why so, I'm saying he should have been more humanized. I think the problem is with the dad, because the dad is kind of aloof and and wants to go. He he leaves, and then he disappears after he leaves. You know, like in space, and. So you kind of know from the beginning that his dad and him didn't have the greatest relationship. But if you change that to where they did and his dad was like doing a brave thing and like, I have to go, son, like it's important for the for humanity. And maybe um, maybe the mother already died. Like maybe we could have seen some of that. Right. Because she had cancer or something, right? Yeah. So maybe she already died and all they had was each other and the father like had to go because he was the the only one that could have done this, right? Right, yes. So so he abandons the kid, but the kid isn't like the kid isn't mad at him. The kid is like, I love my dad so much and I lost him and now here's a chance that he might be alive and I need to find him. So then when you get to the part where he reaches out and they get the the message back, he's like, Hold the fuck up. I need to know. You know, like basically whatever what they ha- what happens in the movie, except the first part is what's screwed up. Because yeah. he doesn't really like his dad. They have a weird relationship. It doesn't make sense that he's sort of like, I need you. And then, okay, we okay, we skipped over to Mars for a second, but let's go Mars back. Mars is bad. Let's go oh, yeah. back to when he's in the shuttle with the team. And the guy freaks out. <laughs> that's not the scene I was gonna, gonna talk about. But that's about what, that's a SOS stupid call? one too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, let's let's do this. So, so they get the mayday call, <laughs> and this is another one of the half baked ideas. I'm like, okay, it's a mayday call. Now he's going on a mission. This is a total detour. As a writer, I'm thinking, you know, as a as a aspiring writer, <laughs> um, I'm thinking. This is either going to be a huge waste of time to the plot or this movie is about to get really interesting because we're completely diverting from the main objective, right? Right. So they get on the Mayday thing and the movie suddenly changes again to like a a scary sci-fi movie now. Like I, I was nervous. I'm like, what, oh, so what was ha- I. Like, and what see, happened my initial here? assumption my initial assumption was like, oh, it's going to be something to do with like people going insane because of the pulses or something. Yeah. I was like, there's going to be some sort of like nutty aspect or it'll be another country trying to stop the American mission or something like that. Yeah. But, and here's well, the thing. Well, I well, didn't they say it was like a Norwegian craft or something? Yeah. That's why I thought it would be another country trying to stop the mission. But basically, um, I knew there were going to be monkeys cause I had seen a screenshot I didn't click on it, but I had seen a screenshot showing the fucking baboon uh, 
behind him. So I knew, I was like, oh god, it's about to happen. The people I were with, one of them was like, is this about to become a horror movie? What the fuck is going on? Because you're seeing, like, the scratches. <laughs> and then, um, you know, the pilot just gets wrecked. Well, okay, so as, as he's getting in the uh, shuttle and they can't find anyone, I'm starting to think, okay, this is going to be related to the antimatter. And so he's probably going to get back on his own ship pretty soon because like it, it's it seems like they're losing their minds due to the the whatever the pulses and um when you see the pilot kind of like stuck and frozen i was like i was thinking venom like a symbiote type thing like that other movie that came out with ryan reynolds what was that called life life yeah something like that where something's attacking them and maybe there's like a, a third element, like there's the pulses, but there's like another element and it'll be connected in the third act. And so then I'm thinking, well, will, will his dad help him fight it? Is it, you know, something, cause we, he's going to find his dad. We, we knew that. So, um, it's a fucking monkey, a baboon. First of all, do they take baboons in the space? Uh, well, I, thought I think it was... the idea is it was like an animal testing for like cosmetics and medical stuff. I, I actually thought the concept of that would be kind of cool. Like, in the future, where else would you do, like, kind of shitty shit like that in space where no one can really identify it? But a baboon? I I mean, I guess, yeah. Like, I mean, we've sent monkeys into space before. But aren't baboons, like, specifically aggressive? Oh, yeah, they're super yes. aggressive. That seems like a weird choice when you... Hey, talk to the Norwegians, man. Like, so those yeah. are the only monkeys they could get their hands on? When there are chimpanzees, I mean, chimpanzees can be violent too, but a baboon is, like, ferocious. Uh-huh. So anyway, it turns out to be a fucking baboon, and I was like, what did the antimatter do to this thing? And then... Turns out turns, nothing. It just yeah, was angry. It's just a mean baboon. And then I don't, I don't really understand how he managed to kill it, because I, like he shot it, right? Well, he shot the first one, and then he vented the airlock on the oh, second yeah, yeah. one. But the first one, like, did he just stiff arm the baboon? Because it, it doesn't make sense how he was able to hold the baboon off without getting yeah, his arm I thrashed. Know. So that was so when when he survived that, I was like, oh, okay. So there was the moon thing first, where the movie is not taking itself seriously, and now there's the baboon that he survives for no reason and so the movie doesn't take itself seriously again plus it killed off donald donald sutherland as a plot device and they're basically telegraphing that his something has gone very wrong with his dad um so this is like a pretty lifeless film right now like it doesn't have any any like mystery really going for it what happened to his dad at that point i can honestly say i didn't care that much Okay. Um, but like let's let's not gloss over the fact that these stupid astronauts who he talks about being a good team and they're supposed to be professionals and they take their dumb psyche valve the co-pilot like can't land the ship even though everyone's like hey man do it and he's like uh, 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 and then it's like oh don't worry the protagonist is a real go-getter he'll take control okay sorry about the barking I'm trying to understand that scene. Did, was it liter literally that he just choked? Yes. That's an insane plot point. I know. For the pilot to suddenly just be like, I don't know how to pilot. <laughs> yeah. And it's and like, then, bro, you're an astronaut. Yeah. And you're the fucking pilot. Like, it's you. And also, this isn't your first flight. Can I, okay, can I just, uh, we need to address this first. Uh, no, this will be better done later, actually, when we talk about the ending. Never mind. Okay. But, yeah, I agree. It, it is stupid. And the guy's, like, move, doing transit from Mars to the moon. Oh, my God. So then, yeah, Mars, Mars is just a boring hell, right? But let's talk about the stupidity that happens when he gets back on the ship and leaves Mars. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, no, but yeah. let's, let's talk about Mars very quickly because that woman whatever her name was as soon as she showed Ruth. up and she's being given like extra screen time i'm like here's another fucking plot device she's gonna s tell him something or give him something and um i didn't mind like the the transmission scenes like i think they could have worked if they had set it up better but um 
when she pulls him back, I I was like, I don't want to see anything that this lady has to offer right now. I'm not interested at all. I also thought that those little rooms, those comfort rooms, I thought they were weird. I didn't I didn't care for those. They didn't seem they cool. Felt, they felt more like prison cells than relaxation rooms. Yeah, they didn't seem like See, and didn't that's work. what I'm saying where the movie's trying to go for this like simultaneous utopia dystopia. But it just ends up being weird. It's like make a choice. Is the future good or is the future bad? I understand well, that in I the real that, world yeah. it's never like that, but the movie the did movie not have the might ability. have been better. Yeah, yeah. The movie did not have the ability to balance two very serious themes. Like, wasn't Blade Runner twenty four to nine? Like they were saying, the future is a bad place. Like you can be happy there, but ideally, there's a lot of bad things going on. Yeah. This one's very murky. Um, so then, so then the girl tells him that's that his father killed her parents and i'm like okay first of all who the fuck cares about your parents second of all all you're telling me is that something strange has happened with his father which we already knew so she drops this bomb on him like yeah your parents killed my or your dad killed my parents it's like well yeah but in the context of the mission where he's talking about a mutiny on board and like he's clearly lost and something has gone wrong something may have attacked him and we don't know what his mental state is it's like this isn't exactly a huge revelation and also right. you've been on screen for like two minutes so <laughs> I, I get that like I, I mean would you guys agree like i didn't feel like i learned anything from that yeah there's not enough investment because she hasn't been there that long and it doesn't really go anywhere the cause... mystery is at the same point it was before she said that yeah. Something weird happened with the dad. He's not who we thought he was. We need to find him. That was where we were before she started talking. That's where we are after. <laughs> yeah, he murdered somebody, but it's in space. He's desperate. Things are things are happening. For me, I don't know. It, that didn't work at all. Yeah, I agree. It it didn't really seem that fluid. Honestly, like the fact that they just they use a lot of people's plot devices in this movie. She just shows up, says some stuff, and then you never see her again. Completely pointless. Could have been done a hundred other ways. Yeah. It also seems weird that they had that hallway that was just like completely dependent on the red light from Mars. Yeah. Like the daylight. I know. It's so... Okay, it seems like that please, would drive you crazy. Can we please <laughs> talk about the stupid takeoff and Put what happens? In okay, the how the fuck minutes. does he sneak on a fucking space shuttle? Yeah, it reminded me of a Men in Black scene. He like... So... I don't even care too much about that. I'm like, fine, he like gets up there. No, come on. Doesn't he? Come no, on. Listen to me, listen to me. It's such I bullshit. What's much, no, what's much funnier is what happens inside. Yes, he should have been incinerated. Yes, it's weird. That <laughs> wait, the, wait, wait, wait. I forgot about what happened on the inside. Yeah, this is why I want to get there, Kia. <laughs> yes, he should have been incinerated. Yes, he should have been able, shouldn't have been able to open the airlock from the outside. You guys then, gave like, this movie a draw? Yeah, yes. because as I said, there are portions of this, like, I see, like, glimpses of four or five different good ideas that are all chopped in half and pushed together. Do you see what I'm saying? But that means there's no good ideas. No, it means that there's there's a potential here that was just destroyed somehow. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to learn there was, like, a studio change in the middle or there was, like, a money issue or someone was like, no, we're doing this. But I still do, I still, because th there were some beautiful scenes, some beautiful shots. There were some interesting ideas. I didn't think so, honestly. But yeah, yeah. anyway, go ahead. Anyways, but when he gets into the damn ship, I'm like, okay. And he's like, "I'm guys, I'm boarding. Just chill out. Everything's fine. And the command's like, kill him, kill him now. And I'm like, okay. And like, what's going to happen? The girl, <laughs> the, girl <laughs> the girl just crunches on the she kills window. her they all killed themselves <laughs> and then the other guy's like trying to knife fight him functions the oxygen tank dies the pilot dies i'm just hold like, on how did okay so the girl like comes at him right yeah and then, and then they blast off and she smashes into the window yeah that is, that is seriously like one of the dumbest things i've ever seen in a film yeah yeah because just on the tone of the film and the context, like he already, he just snuck aboard the ship. My suspension of disbelief is really out there right now. Yeah, and then I know. He, 
and then he sneaks on and it's like what is it three verse one and she kills herself then the asian guy pulls out a knife and starts fighting and i guess it's supposed to be a tense thing but they're just like oh don't do it don't do it and then he stabs himself like not totally but pretty much stabs himself and what does the what does the pilot do the pilot dies because when the second guy punctures like the oxygen tank it poisons the oh air yeah and he yeah dies. so he they all chokes. kill themselves they all kill themselves it is the biggest fucking clusterfuck i have ever seen and you know why scene. they did that because they couldn't have brad pitt kill him because then he's the bad guy then he's a Even murderer he's already the bad guy but i would have been okay if like like so he try he sort of goes to the dark side to accomplish his mission which is what his dad did like that could have worked thematically if he like kind of deteriorates. And also, that's what he seems like he's doing anyway. He's breaking the rules. He's on the ship. He's gonna commandeer it so he can kill his yeah, dad himself. It, it, they were they were flirting with that. That would have been a nice arc too. Like, you know, he's not his father. Something has gone wrong with his father. He's estranged from his father. I would have gone the other way, which he loves his father. But if you did yeah. want to do the estrangement, then like he, he ugh, the fucking dogs always make me lose my train of thought. Can you guys hear them? Yeah. 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 They're in the bedroom, like away from me. I know, that's crazy. The mic's too good, Gia. Yeah, I guess. Um, they're too loud. So yeah, like I I'm not my father. I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm a company man. I'm gonna see what he did. And along the way, he's so determined to finish his job just like his father that he becomes a monster and then he f- meets his dad finds out his dad had become a monster and realizes that he's become his dad and then he has to make a decision like i'm not going to do this or i'm going to i'm going to stop i'm going to make it right whatever i have to do it, it would probably have to end with him dying to be honest but if you went that route um okay so yeah that was the dumbest scene i've seen in a long time yeah and so after that happens, I like that he messages command, and he's like, "Listen, I'm continuing with the mission. I'm gonna do it." If There's I not really much says. you can do about it right now. No, but it was an interesting scene to have. And then, so what did you guys think of the like long journey? He starts to lose it montage because I I was okay with it. I felt like they skimmed over that a bit. I mean, they were running out of time, and this is what I'm saying. Like they started. So as he started losing it. Here's where I think I should... I, I suspected two different things were going to happen. How the movie was going to end. One, he gets there and his dad's dead. And it turns out his dad has nothing to do with it. Okay? And two... Would have been I thought more he, interesting. I thought he was going to get there and he was going to stop like everything that happened. But then he was going to get back and the pulses would have killed everything already. Because there had been a few pulses oh, that could be while he was out too. there. Yeah, those are both I better thought, than what happened. I thought he was going to go out, he was going to solve the problem, whatever, and then he gets back and it's too late. The pulses destroyed everything. And I was like, I was waiting for it, but... Because, so anyway. because he would have missed it at that point and he goes right. back and it's not there. That would have yeah. been an awesome ending. I know. That would have been insane. Because they even say earlier in the movie, the, the antimatter becomes more powerful as it travels through the solar system. Yeah. So if he gets through one and lives, which he gets hit by about three of them while he's out. Yeah. I was like, oh, but no. But anyway, so he has this insanity montage. I was okay with it. I was like, all right, he's losing it, but it wasn't anything special. Then he gets there, and oh my God, that final leg of the movie took so damn long so damn long from when he gets to neptune yeah Uh uh-huh and every reveal was crap it's like oh yeah they mutinied because we didn't find alien life and so first of all i'm like okay maybe i can buy that and it's like oh i'm not a murderer i accidentally killed them and i'm trying to stop this yeah that was another point is like is there a life out there or not that's like a theme of the movie and then it turns out there's not and i'm like is that is that really what the movie you were trying to tell me like that there's I guess no that's life another there? theme they were trying to do, which is like, what's the point? He has of to that? be satisfied with the life on Earth. Yeah, that was another thing I was going to mention at some point, like because I, I kind of said when I gave my initial review that this movie was like sort of like false advertising. Um, when I saw the trailers for this, when they were like sh- showing Tommy Lee Jones and saying like, the, like this project has the potential to wipe out all human life. At first, I thought, oh, they're like doing experiments with some like weird material out in the solar system that they have to go stop, which they sort of, I guess, did that. And then there was like, oh, 
alien life has like something to do with this. So maybe he'll get there and he'll figure out there's like an alien there messing with him. That's what's causing the surges. But then he gets there and they like never talk about it. They show one image of the engine that says like antimatter reactor or something, and then they just never bring it up. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're you're totally right about that. I also felt like there should have been more f- like full scenes of him on Earth with Liv Tyler, like flashbacks. Yeah, well, at least she would have been in the damn movie at that point. Yeah, and but we would have, I don't know, we would have got a sense. Like, so much of it, when, when he lands there, so much of it is just completely undercooked. That, like, when you meet Tommy Lee Jones, it's like, okay, so you did go a little crazy. You're also, you also, like, tried to stay on the mission. So I don't know how what I'm supposed to feel about this. Um he, he sort of forgives his dad, and you see that his dad has lost it a little bit, probably because of the mission. Um, and and then his dad is just like, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not going back with you. It's like, all right, well, fucking go then. Like, who cares? You're, you're like, I get it. He probably doesn't want to face whatever he did on Earth. I get that. Seems really weird to to send yourself out into space. Yeah. Like yeah. he could have killed himself in the comfort of his bed or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and how just, he said he never cared uh, about him. Or yeah, he's like that's what I'm saying. Even even his entire character, like, turns out he's not evil. He's trying to stop it. It was all an accident. But he doesn't give a shit, and he's still an asshole. And then like literally the entire movie is like it's like Brad Pitt's trying to convince him. He says no. Brad Pitt does convince him. He says no. And then oh my god, when he like when they're about to like do something, and Tommy Lee Jones like jets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you knew it was coming, but I mean, I, like, I at first I thought it was part of the plan because they like make eye contact as he does it. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is a weird plan. And then I don't know, like, I guess it was nice to have a scene where he literally physically lets go of his father. The problem is, this is not the same character we were introduced to at the start of the movie. It's like the reverse of what happened in Gravity, where. Uh, and then somehow it's not over. We get to have more time of him getting back to his ship, getting in the ship, escaping the nuke, getting back. And then he gets back to Earth and like, despite like going nuts, disobeying orders and killing like seven people, he's just welcome yeah, back and life yeah. is normal. Yeah. And did was there any doubt that he was going to meet Liv Tyler? No, no doubt. But I, here's the thing. I didn't care either way. I didn't I care, but I was like, like oh, give me a, give me a fucking break. This is No, but how cool would it have been it, if he had gotten back to Earth and it was dead? Like he's in orbit, he's not getting signals. So he's he's like he falls in and he gets out and it's just destruction. I mean, I kind of thought that was, was going to happen late. at one point cuz you know like there's that thing where like when you're out in space, time progresses differently when you're on the planets. So like he gets there and Tommy Lee Jones is alive and he's like looks much older it's been 30 years you'd think that well it's like, neptune it's not like a yeah game. it's not far yeah. enough out for time displacement to <laughs> um but, but, like, but so here's the arc here's the arc i think that we just came up with he you know he's super uh he admires his dad a lot he lives in his shadow basically and then they tell him classified like listen you're the only guy qualified for this it also happens to be your father i mean that's like regular movie bullshit but there's a chance he could be alive and there's a threat on Earth and we need you to go out there and find him and figure out what's going on. And he's like, yes, I'm going to go out there. Um, you know, I mean, they would they should plant it in your head that that the father encountered a problem and he's not the cause of the problem. Because don't they suggest that he, the father might have done something about it? Yes. Like, like he's the antimatter. He's the reason it's happening. Don't they suggest that in that initial meeting? After I the believe fall. they do. They do, yeah. So well, they said like he's hiding. They right? think yeah, he's he might be hiding from us, and we need to find out if he's already addressed this problem or whatever. So basically, make it so that we think that the father is a victim, or that like because of the the because of the antimatter thing, they've like somehow discovered his location or something like that. So we're gonna go out there and see what's going on. And then deal with the antimatter thing. So he's like, yes, of course. Liv Tyler's like, what are you doing? It's a suicide mission. You can't go out there. He's like, I have to. It's my father. Like Humanity needs me. He's super hopeful, super optimistic. He goes out there. You're going to have to rewrite the fucking monkey thing. You're going to have to rewrite the moon thing because it's it doesn't work at all. Um, you're going to have to rewrite him fighting the squad. That shit doesn't work either. Um, 
In fact, I would I would even do it almost like interstellar in a way. Like I hate to rip that off, but like maybe he has to land a couple places where they think he might be, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like you lose people along the way because of that. Um and then you get there and it's like I don't even know if you need the antimatter thing because you kind of need Earth to be in peril, but do you? Mm. I mean, you need it for the cool ending. Yeah. So I guess you have to keep it, but all right. But and it's, it's just it's, cool because it's this this question of like what is out there. Well, you it's know? very vague. It, well, well, yeah, because it turned out to be a machine. I, I would change it to something more natural. Um, like maybe the start of another Big Bang, something like that. Right. You know, uh, you know what that reminds me of something I think we kind of glossed over. Do you remember when he's on Mars and he like spends that time sending the messages to his dad and they don't get a response, and then he like responds. Do we ever find out what his dad said? No. I don't think so. That's so dumb. Um, and uh, I, so, I mean, at this point, he probably would have been like, "My son, I do not care about you. <laughs> yeah. Don't come out here, my son." Yeah. So anyway, he um, he you know lands on different planets, barely survives, makes it there, gets to the end on his own, just him, and finds his dad, and it turns out his dad is the bad guy, right? And yeah. not like because he had to, but because I don't know. I think maybe you need aliens, or you need a better reason for the dad to lose it. I don't know. You could do like the shitty one, like the antimatter is me- like the pulses are messing with his brain at that vicinity. Honestly, I think you can make the dad a good guy. Make the dad a good guy. He needs rescuing. He's lost his mind a bit. He may have done some bad things, but not regarding the antimatter thing. That wasn't him. Um, so Brad Pitt tries to save him, but his father dies as they try to stop the antimatter, which, um, like you said, Emerson, maybe they do somehow. I don't know the signs of it, but let's say they stop it, but his father dies, right? Right. Pretty predictable. He goes back to Earth to see that the pulses have like destroyed the Earth, and that's the end of the film. I kind of well, would have. Uh... Here, here's an emotional arc that that I, I forgot to mention. So sorry, Everett. So it's all about him. Like he leaves what he has at Earth to find his dad. When he finds his dad, he loses him and realizes he needs what's on Earth. Like he has to. Like that. That might be something his dad tells him. Like I should have never left you. I should have stayed home. Like do you have a woman or someone at home that you can be with? And like stuff like that to make him go like shit i gotta get back and then he goes back (laughs) and it's gone it's over yeah that would be a that would be a badass fucking film exactly yeah like i would probably buy that film and put it on my shelf was like you know even if it wasn't like perfect in all the ways that it that needs to be hit at the end that if they set it up right, yeah. Yeah, that beautiful just crescendo. You need oh. him to want to leave Earth, and then you need him to want to come back at the end for it to work. Yeah. And the reason is he goes to get his dad. Honestly, his dad could even survive. And then there's just the two of them out in space. Like, he has his dad, but he lost everything else. That might even be better. I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking, like... Because I feel like his dad didn't really have enough character development, really, in this movie. Like, what if you restructure it where... He had more than most. What if you, like, restructured it sort of as a... Like, just as a theory. What if you saw all the things that his dad did and, like... You kind of saw the evolution of how he went nuts and the effect it had on his kid the entire movie. Like, his dad... Like, it turns out, like, his dad's, like, near Mars conducting experiments and they pick him up because he's the one that's qualified to go and like rescue the people that are out there on that secret project that's causing the pulses. And then as they travel, then you see him go nuts. You see him purge the entire crew because there's a mutiny and his son watches him do all this. And then at the end, like he could sacrifice himself or he could die or he could live. That's an interesting concept. Another one would be, what if he wasn't the first person they sent out there? Yeah. They've been sending people out there for a while. And so he has to find them too. Yeah. Yeah. He finds a few of them too. All right, puppies are going to go crazy. So many ways uh, this movie could have been quick. improved. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, 
But overall, you know, it's just... And the reason I have to give this movie a draw and not a loss is there were ideas here. I saw glimpses of this possible brilliance that could have shown through. And Key is right. You know, a loss is something we do not recommend. And based on how we've talked about this, it sounds like we don't recommend it. Although... I mean, we I shit know. on this movie the whole time. Oh, yes, we did. But I've, I've shit on movies before when I've given them a draw. I'm still standing by that there, there are some... I can see how people would like this. I can because there are there are elements of this that I think would appeal to a certain. I crowd. think those people are easily pleased. Oh, I agree, Kia. But um, they exist. All right, so fight of the week. <laughs> I, I had one more this thing is to say. Be just stupid. Uh, okay, let him go. Right, go I had one more thing. Just uh, out of curiosity, Emerson. Earlier, when you were saying, I wonder if the writers, like, they switch writers or something. I went and I went and I looked this up. It says in Wikipedia apparently this movie had poor test screenings. So they did a shit ton of reshoots, reshoots, and they raised the production budget from eighty million to a hundred million. And the movie is still like this. No, but hmm. then now the question is because it may have been better. Added. It may have been better in its earlier form. Oh, I guarantee the ape thing was something they added. I guarantee, one hundred percent. They they just couldn't have the movie the of them traveling thing. through space. The no, I guarantee time. you. I guarantee you. One of the versions with virgins, virgins. One of the versions was just them uh, going from Moon, Mars, Neptune, and they added, I guarantee you, they added the ape thing, and they may have even added the, like, fight on, on like, as they take off. Because, I like, one of the virg- virgins... Um, oh, my God, Brad Pitt was Brad Pitt was not in the reshoots. Really? Oh, so yeah, I feel like it. the moon scene was probably him. Honestly... I mean, e- the moon scene was probably the reshoot. You know what would have yeah. made that monkey scene so much better? He had to go from the moon. And said apes together strong. Well, no, he had to go from the moon to Mars, uh, <laughs> under the guise of uh, if the if the monkey turns around and he can talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, think about it. Like he was, uh, it was a top secret mission. No one knew what he was really doing. He had to like pose as like a, a like a like a crew member to get to Mars. What if that ship was a cargo ship, and part of the cargo ship was like live animal su- like test subjects. And that's like how that shit happened. Like halfway through the voyage, they escaped because a pulse hit them, and everyone died that way. And you don't even have to stop the movie. You don't have to stop at an SOS call. It just goes like that. No, it could have been I mean, interesting. I would like to see. The, I mean, at the, I don't know. If you're gonna put monkeys like around him, I want to see him fight the monkey. Yes. So this is actually <laughs> the fight of the week, by the way. Oh, yeah. Figured. So. This is going to basically restructure some elements of the movie. It's me, Everett, and Kia. It's the three of us in the spaceship. I we die. received the distress call from the Norwegian vessel. There are ten monkeys inside. No, that's too much. Three monkeys. <laughs> there are three that's monkeys in the vessel. I know. One monkey for each of us. What kind Kia, of monkey? They are the baboons. Oh, God. The baboon, baboon. The baboon platoon upon the moon. Um... But anyways, <laughs> the baboons, they're, they're in the station. Kia, you have foreknowledge that there are perhaps some... You, you know that there are baboons on the station, but you don't know if they've broken out, and the station's not responding to hails. We have to go aboard to check it out. Do I keep this information from you guys? You can share with us that there are baboons on the ship. It's, no, it's I'm going to keep it a secret. Of course you are. So, so we get on the ship... There are claw marks. I was like, oh, what is this? I'm like, Ev, it's just normal scratches. And he's like, oh, okay, that's weird. And then, um, so, I mean, all right, I mean, one of us is apparently going to get ambushed by a monkey. That doesn't have to happen. How else do we find the monkeys? I mean, well, do we, you can do we choose how up? we explore, yeah. Do we have guns? Yes, all three of us have a pistol. But do pistols work in spaceships? Well, uh, it's yes. A, his, Aren't you going to kill yourself? Is it an energy no, his, pistol or is it a kinetic pistol? futuristic space pistol that he has worked in the ship. So, Yeah, okay. Just the shrapnel alone inside the... <laughs> well, I'm guessing uh-huh. that's why they didn't use conventional bullets because the oxygen like, probably would have fucked with that. Yeah. And the energy probably doesn't like make shatters. Okay, so we have like some weird bullets at work. Now, it seems okay. This is the really stupid part of the movie because it seems like if if you had like 
if you saw the baboon first, it would be it's pretty over. hard for it to <laughs> yeah, yeah to like get at you. Yeah. If you had a gun. Like I'm not saying I would hit it between the eyes, but I'm gonna <laughs> shoot as much as I have to until it <laughs> dies. Like I'm not gonna let it eat my hands and face, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like by the time it's breaking through my helmet, I'm gonna shoot it in the chest. Is that unreasonable? Yeah. That's no, that's not reasonable. reasonable. All right, so I mean, this is a pretty uh, open and shut case. I would just send Everett first into every room. And- yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fight of the week unless I die or something. <laughs> you die in everyone. Everyone that every it's a single one. one. And it's always like uh, in in mean spirits, like. I it's, like send him to his death every time. It's like an execution of the week for me. You know what? That just reminded me of during the Godzilla one when you're like, it's you in the car with Jade and Everett and Ian, and you have to get out of the city. And you're like, here's what I do I'd stop and I'd be like, Ian and Everett, get out. I'll come back for you. <laughs> there, there's like always like some backhanded like explanation like well like american animals me and ian were stuck on the roof because we'd look too imposing fucking no, because Shazam. ian is too weak to carry anything that was number one why ian had to be the lookout you said i would like draw attention yeah you would walk and in then with your Shazam, you had to like trick me out of my powers <laughs> i forget what that was but no, the way you said he would trick out of the powers is you just be like, come on, give me, give me your powers, Everett. And Everett's like, no. And he would just be like, no, you're going to give me your powers. <laughs> that was Shazam? Yeah. yeah was Shazam. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. There was another one where, oh, yeah, the, the Aladdin one. That was funny, too. There was the, uh, what was it? Um, The one where the, uh, the guy made a comment. Uh, Glass, that's what it was. Didn't I? Didn't uh, I die in that? No, movie? no, no. It was split. Was it, it was split. split. <laughs> it was split. Where he's like the monster would let Everett live after all the suffering he endured in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was the comment we got, right? Yeah, that was yeah. the comment yeah. that we got. Oh man, uh, it's the Russian guy. I forget. His yeah. Name. Like uh, shout out to the Russian guy. That was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we hope you're still around. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I don't. Re- okay. So. Yeah. All right, Roundup. I, I'm still watching The Good Place. I got to be honest, I kind of hate that show. But it's one of those shows where I like, I don't know, I keep putting it on for some reason. I don't, I mean, it's not a bad show, but I just don't think it's that funny. But I keep watching it. This I is the one why. about the guy that goes to heaven under the wrong name, right? It was a woman, but yeah. Or the, the woman, yeah, okay. Uh, Kristen Bell. Um, all right, uh, Everett, you said you've been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Yeah, um, it. It's free on, well, not free on Hulu. It's on Hulu, and I just when I started watching it, I thought it was going to be a lot more comedic, but, you know, there's actually, a, like, a little bit of seriousness to it, and the jokes actually land really well. So I, it's a lot better than what I anticipated it to be. Because, like, I had only, I'd only really ever heard about it. Uh, I heard about it first when I was watching the roast of, I think it was James Franco, where they were making a bunch of jokes about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm like, oh, well... It's I've only heard that it's TV really show. funny. I have no idea. That's what, what I've is. heard as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been watching it. I think it's hilarious. But a part of me feels like it's a little overrated. How funny is it? They make a they make a lot of recurring jokes, but a lot of them like land pretty well. Like some of them are overdone, but they're spaced out enough just to where it's not kind of overdoing it. That and a lot of the, the characters have really good chemistry together. Like it does not seem unnatural at all. It kind of honestly kind of reminds me of Parks and Rec, but with cops, sort of. Like maybe The Office a okay. little bit. But I All think right. it's pretty funny. Parks and Rec. They've okay. got a lot of they've got a lot of deadpan humor in there, that I think is like absolutely hilarious. All right. Um, I didn't see any interesting trailers. Did you guys anything? Uh, no, I haven't seen anything. I've been watching Disenchantment season two on Netflix. That's the show that was created by the guy who created The Is Simpsons season two Futurama. New? Yeah, season two came out like two days ago. Um, was the first one good? The first season was, the way I describe it, was acceptable. It's like, it's supposed to be funny, so like you smile, but it, it wasn't like anything to call home about. It's, but the episodes are short. They're like 20 minutes, so I, it was easy to watch. This season is funnier so far. I'll say that. Um, okay. But we'll see. So um, apparently, 
the official Frozen 2 trailer came out, apparently. Oh, but did you see know, it? I don't know how it ended. No, it came out 15 hours ago. It's on trending on YouTube. Yeah. Whatever. Um, season 3 of Big Mouth coming November 18th on Netflix. That's pretty fast. Yeah. Second season wasn't that great, though. No. I liked it, but it seems the third one's probably going to do it in for me. What? I mean, because <laughs> you guys didn't like the second season, but I, I kind of liked it. I watched it. It's going it to do it in? What does that mean? Yeah, like like the third season's going to like kill the show for me. Like it, they're kind of. Th- I still don't no, know what like, you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, so we all liked the first season, right? Okay. You guys didn't like the second season, but when I watched it, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd probably watch it again. Well, I don't think we disliked it. I just it wasn't as good. It wasn't as. I good. didn't like it as much. They're making a third season. My logic is with this kind of comedy and like this kind of humor. There's only so much you can do before it starts becoming a little like redundant and a little overdone. So the fact that they're not only making a third season, they're signed on for more than just three seasons. I feel like that's just a little too much for me. That's a good point, Everett. I don't, I don't know, like, how much longer can they go on with this, you know? I don't know. Like, it's puberty humor. They have to grow up at some point, and there's, like, a point where they're, like, crossing the line. Like, the last season, like, was just kind of weird. Like, they took it to some pretty weird places. I don't know. I guess I have to watch it to really give it a full rating. All I remember of that season was they showed, like, the teenage girl's boobs. Didn't they? Yeah. Yes, they did. It was, like, in the third episode. Um, The show gets a lot of flack. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Jeffrey Wright is going to be Commissioner Gordon in the Batman movie. All right, let's look look up what this guy looks like because I don't remember. He's in Casino Royale. Um, he's gonna be Uwatu oh, the Watcher. Oh, it's this guy. Oh, it's the, yeah, it's uh, he's the American agent. Yeah, uh, what's his the name? The CIA agent. What what else has he been in? I don't know. Let's check his IMDb. He's there's some, there's How another do you spell role. Right. Wait a W-R-I-T. minute. Uh, W-R-I-T. W-R-I-T. Oh, he was in a, He was in the Hunger Games. I Hunger remember that. Hunger Games. Something else. Is there anything else? Boardwalk Empire. Bojack Horseman. Uh, Westworld. There. Yeah, that that was the thing. Yeah. Oh, Jeffrey Wright. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. played Felix. Uh, so Jonah Hill is up for a villain role. Oh God, it's the Riddler, isn't it? No, it's the Penguin. <laughs> huh? Are you sure? Why do you think it would be the Riddler? Because like Jonah Hill's typically a comedian. Yeah, he's got the body structure. It actually says penguin, he's though. being eyed to play the Riddler and not the Penguin. <laughs> I was right. But he should definitely be the penguin, if anything. They're not gonna do that, kid. They're gonna make him the Riddler, and it's gonna be cringy as hell. They're gonna be it's like, gonna "Oh be my bad. god, now we've made the R- Riddler scary," and it's gonna be Jonah Hill going, blah, 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 two plus two. What does I feel it like mean?" He's gonna be like a tech nerd type of guy. Yeah. With tattoos, I bet you. I bet you he has tattoos. <laughs> it's gonna say "damage" on his forehead. Yeah. He's going to have, like, math equations, like, tattooed on his back. Um, Weird shit. Yeah, like, math fan. <laughs> <laughs> the square um, root of pi. Honestly, who who's out there that could really play a good Penguin and Riddler? Because they haven't well, done Riddler since... A lot since of them died. Before. There was James Gandolfini. He's dead. There was Philip Seymour Hoffman. He's dead. There was Bob Hoskins. He's dead. Um, right now, I think maybe Josh Gad, possibly. Why don't they just bring? Why don't they just bring back Danny DeVito? That's an idea, sure. <laughs> um, I feel like there was someone else that was really primed for the Penguin. Um, I can't remember right now. I think even like someone like Robin Williams could have done it too. Let's have Peter Dinklage play the play the Penguin. He's like he's small. I mean, aside from the fact that he's small and that makes him an obvious choice, um, that's not terrible. Just, hmm. but but you want him to but have I an English accent. I thought the penguin was supposed to be like somehow physically imposing despite being small. No. Like he's he's supposed to be like a gangster. He's not supposed to be like imposing. It depends who's writing him. Yeah, he was never meant to be like deformed like that. Um, he's usually just a gangster. 
and he doesn't have to be big. He's usually small. Um, Jack Black is one, I mean, just because he's kind of stocky. Huh. Um, Toby Jones, the guy who plays Arnim Zola. Um, he I wouldn't mind it. seeing that. Yeah, that'd be nice. I heard someone say Andy Serkis. Mm. Elijah Wood. You know who might be able to do it? Um, mm. Mark Addy, who played uh, Robert Baratheon. Hmm. Really? He could play a big, imposing English guy. But the but Penguin's not supposed to be like big. He's supposed to be short, right? It doesn't matter, Ev. Yeah, I know, but I'm trying to envision him in that. I don't really see it. What don't you see? He, I don't know. Maybe it's just my bias from watching Game of Thrones, but I don't exactly see him playing that kind of role. I, all I can really see him is, like, big fat Robert Baratheon. He was in a he was in a sitcom called Still Standing, and he was in the Downton Abbey movie, which I forgot to talk about. I saw that too. I give that a win. It's very much like more of Downton Abbey. They're they're not they're not doing that thing where it's like oh it's a movie so let's like send him to Paris or some weird thing like that. It's just them at home. The king and queen are coming to stay at their house for a night, so there's a lot of like tension and drama it it was good it was jade's choice to see it but i like that show too um who is this guy's name because there's a guy in here who i think might do a great job but i forgot his name well i'm looking it up hold on uh timothy spall i think he could do it you know who he is no he's uh he was like he's like an enchanted in a couple other movies uh timothy spall yeah he was in. He was. He played Wormtail in Harry Potter. Oh yeah, he could do it. Yeah, dude, he plays. Uh, this guy plays. Fucking Churchill in like every movie. <laughs> Doesn't he? Does he? He. I, I've seen him as Churchill a bunch of times. Um. I'm I think he played it in. No, he wasn't Churchill. Am I thinking of someone Thomas? else? Who who does he play? Um, okay. Through his. He's in like every sort of royal political movie. As some sort of whatever. Anyway, um, moving on. Ghost Rider. Oh, there's news about him. Oh yeah. Marvel Television planning to bring Robbie Reyes' version of Ghost Rider to Hulu in its own series. A new rumor going around claims that Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige also has plans for the character. A different version of him. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. teased the existence of Johnny Blaze. Uh, blah, blah. Okay, so there's not even a quote. It's just a rumor. I wouldn't mind seeing a okay. reboot of the Ghost Rider movies. I mean... Sure. When Nick Cage did it, it was uh, I like Ghost Rider. Like, overblown. All right, gaming Avengers project. Oh, Apparently, oh there was some footage of her fighting. Who? It's a it's a it's like a five minute trailer. Black Widow oh, Black fighting Widow. Taskmaster. Oh, to coincide with the film. Oh yeah, um, shocker. They had that in the. Uh, they had a, the yeah. I've seen that. That's Does it like look good? Footage. Um. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It's just, it's kind of like there's like quick time events I'm watching. She's like riding Taskmaster's back around a bridge. Um, okay. And she's like punching him. You know, you have to like press A to punch That's him. That's kind of boring and lazy. It's been done, yeah. Um, Feels very bad. I'm not going to say already. like, oh, this is, this is tired because pretty much every game like this has done that. So you can't really blame it, but... I mean, what are the, I don't know what else they would have done. I don't like her writing his back, though. I think that looks stupid. Um, okay, now it's some combat. You're dodging, and you're doing, like, striking combos using your batons. So it looks like pretty standard, simple stuff that we've seen before. Um, she has invisibility, so that's interesting. I don't know. Okay. Like My hype for that game was significantly lessened when they said they're not going to have a multiplayer campaign. Like I the hope one thing I wanted. I hope that they don't have 
I hope this is not in the same universe as the Spider-Man PS4 because I want to see better versions of these characters in the video games. Would it be? Like, do you think that's a possibility? Well, remember in Spider-Man, they talk about how the Avengers are on the West Coast, and this is in San Francisco? Uh-huh, I guess that could coincide, Possible. but... Yeah. Um, May 15th, well, it's not that far away. Uh, okay, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Beta. Mm-hmm. I'm torn on this. I think I'm going to not pre-order it, to be honest. I'm still solidly... I really thoroughly enjoy it. I really had a lot of fun with it. Almost every game mode they released, I would really enjoy it, and I'm so happy I pre-ordered. But I understand why Kia uh, doesn't like it as much. I also thoroughly enjoyed it, but I am disappointed that I didn't get to play more of the gunfighter mode before they took it out. What's that? That was the 2v2. Oh, yeah. That was the only thing that I liked. That yeah, I thing, actually liked. The good thing ever it is that that'll be back in the full game. And Kia, I'm sad you weren't able to get the realism mode and play that. Because uh, it I was an I interesting experience. I yeah, yeah, no. We, we played the realism mode. It has, like, no HUD or anything. It was okay. Uh, it was kind of weird, though, because I thought it was that... Uh, and Kia brought this up while we were playing. I thought the, the gun sights were different. Like, you couldn't fully aim down no, the sights. No, that's NVG. NVG. NVG and realism are different. Uh, okay. So, the mode... So, where you're, so where you're realism in the dark, is like hardcore then. Yeah, realism, well, sort of. NVG is like hardcore. You can't ADS without being seen. Ev, we played uh, the NVG. No, I know we played NVG, but remember I was having the issues, like I was using an ACOG site, so it yeah, completely ACOG, negated that. See. But with other ones, you can't. Yeah, you know, I'm actually really enjoying Battlefield. I, I'm itching to play as soon as we finish this. Yeah, so, yeah I don't I'm know not, about I'm not, that yet. I'm not gonna lie. I I used to hate Battlefield Five, but I hated been, it when I bought it. I it's really been a did. while since I've played it. I I enjoyed the few games we played. I played a little bit today. It's uh, I was watching some gameplay. It looks I don't know. It looks like everything you always say you hate, Kia. No, it's much slower. And like Everett and I were actually able. Like I don't feel like I just die out of nowhere. Like sometimes you do, but most of the time Everett and I like fought and died, and that was fun. And like at the end of the night last night, we we were holding a hill and we held it for a pretty good, decent amount of time, and uh, we were we were bleeding out and we our team only had one life left, and we were watching the other team go down from like four, three, two, and then it was one and one and Everett bled out and we lost. <laughs> yeah, I was like holding on the whole time. We were like just itching for the clock to like stay there for like a second. We were so close. Yeah. But yeah. I then mean, like uh. They're and like then other they're going to add the Pacific stuff, so... Yeah. That'll be cool mm, if they actually we'll see. do that. I don't know if I want to pay $60 for it. I'm surprised it's still full price, but... I might pick it up. Like, if it goes on sale, I'll pick it up. But for now, like, mainly what I'm just looking forward to is COD. Well, I mean, if it's worth it, if we're all going to play, I'll buy it for you. I mean, <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> I will play if you buy it. Okay. <laughs> All right, and on that, we will end the episode. <laughs> um, I, I, what do you guys want to do for next week? Uh, what the hell is there next week? So yeah, there's nothing really out? next week. The week after that is Joker. You want to do Mindhunter? We already did Mindhunter. Season two, though. We haven't we haven't like done a full review of it, have we? I mean, we've talked about it. We like, talked over about multiple it episodes. last episode. And... Oh, okay. That, that's fine, then. Um, um, I don't know. What else is there? There's something coming out October. Okay, so here's what we can do. There's something coming out October 11th. I know Gemini Man is one of them. Oh, oh God. God. I don't want to see that. I don't really want to see that, but I thought, like, if we are going to see that, we could watch Looper first because it's kind of, like, similar. Um, I'm okay but, with okay, Looper. You, but something else. Oh, El Camino, the Breaking Bad movie is coming out. Okay, so, so we probably won't do Gemini Man at least the week it comes out. So then, do you guys want to watch Munich? Because you guys, we just watched the spot. Yeah, I'll so. do Munich. Yeah, I'll watch Munich. Yeah, before we like you, you forget about it. So, all right, Munich next week. See you guys next time. All right, all right see, see you. Ya. Thank you for listening to the Iron Coop Fights Movies. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, review our podcast on iTunes so that we can spread the show around. To contact the show, you can reach us at theironcoop at gmail.com. 
and on Instagram at the Iron Cube. Join us for another edition of the Iron Cube Fights Movies.